Assalamu alaikum, how are you guys doing? I hope you guys are doing great and in this video we are going to create this beautiful GUI calculator using Python and Kiwi. So without any further ado, let's get started. Okay, so first of all just create an empty folder anywhere in your computer. I just create a folder named calculator and then let's create a Python file. Let's say calculator.py and then let's uh, create another file and the extension of this file is gonna be kv so the reason we're using this kv extension is because we're gonna use kv language kv design language to design our uh, this gui so you can see this gui we're gonna create this gui using kv design language so before you start this video, you have to know the basics of Kiwi and basics of Python. So if you don't know the basics of Kiwi and Python, I would suggest you that uh, watch some videos on Kiwi and Python and come back to this video later or or just be with me. I will my, I will try my best to explain you all of those things, whatever I'm going to do. So now let's just uh, open up your ID. I'm using Python as my ID. You can use uh, any of your favorite ID. Okay, so once your ID is open, let's just drag it and drop in, drop into your ID. So it will open up that folder. So let me just quickly configure my interpreter. So before we start, we have to install Kiwi. So to install Kiwi, just open your terminal from your uh, ID or you can open your CMD if you are on a Windows and if you are on Mac or Linux, you can open your terminal. So let's just say pip install Kiwi. So it will install your Kiwi. And if you are on Mac or in Linux, just say pip3. Uh, there is its requirement already satisfied so uh, because I am already installed Kiwi so that's why it's saying requirement already satisfied in your case it will install the Kiwi so once you installed Kiwi so let's just import few things from Kiwi so let's say from Kiwi import app sorry Kiwi.app Kiwi.app import app and then we need another thing called uh, kiwi.eyx.widget sorry import widget okay and then we need from kiwi.core.window import window let's say from kiwi.lang dot builder import builder so that's all we need for now and then we have to do is we have to create two classes uh, so first of all let's say class calculator widget let's say and this class will inherit this widget class okay so so let's say widget and for now let's say pass so we'll get back to this class once we finished all our design part so for now let's just keep it like this and let's create another class and let's say calculator app and this class will inherit this app class so simply let's say app and inside of this let's say create a method called build and inside of this build method we have to return this calculator widget class so let's say return calculator widget and now let's run our app so if underscore underscore name is equal to underscore underscore main so inside of this we have to call this class okay we have to call this class basically we have to run this class so there's a calculator not widget calculator app dot run there you go 
so at this at this point we should see a black screen so let's just run this and there you go we got this basic black screen which Kiwi provides us so this screen size is quite big but uh, if you notice the original one the the screen size is quite small so we have to set the screen size or the window size whatever you want to call so to do this uh, we have to say like we import this window class okay so let's say window dot size and this will take a tuple and here you have to pass the value that how much you want the width and how much you want the height so let's say i want 350 pixel in width and 550 in height you can obviously experiment with this so now let's run again and the other screen size is okay and then next thing we have to do, do is we have to uh, so we have to link this kv file with our python file so that so that our python file can get all the design stuff so to link so let's say builder dot load file and inside of this uh, load file method you have to pass the relative path of the kv file so in my case it's in the same folder so i'll just say calculator.kv okay so for now this is it for our python file we'll get back to this python file later on but let's move on to our calculator.kv file and here we have to uh, first of all let's just copy this calculator widget class name and in here let's say uh, less than sign and the class name and then a greater than sign so it is basically saying that i want to put all my design inside of this calculator widget class let's just hit enter and just hit tab for indentation and inside of this calculator widget class i want to create a layout so uh, kibi provides different kind of uh, layout like box layout grid layout float layout page layout but for this example, we're gonna use two layouts. First, we're gonna use box layout, and inside of that box layout, we're gonna create a grid layout. So, first of all, let's say to create a box layout, so there's a box layout and hit enter, and then again a indentation. And box layout had uh, has two different parameters. First is the orientation that what is the orientation you want to be of that layout so there is two orientation uh, vertical and the horizontal so at this point but for this example i want vertical orientation so let's say orientation vertical and then we have to pass the size so let's say size so the size is gonna be root dot width and root dot height so basically what is saying is uh, by root dot height and root dot size is take all of the width you can get and take all of the height you can get so it will take entire of the width sorry so this root dot height and root dot width property will take entire this entire of this width and entire of this height okay so inside of this box layout we have to create a text input so basically text input is where you can input text so as you can see this uh, on top of this where all those number is popping up this is basically the text input so we have to create this first so to create this let's say text input and let's say the initially the text is gonna be zero so remember this text input always take a string so you can uh, you can pass any uh, integer or any number here so you have to pass only a string so i'm just passing zero obviously you say string then let's say font size uh let's say 33 sorry 43 and the multi-line is let's say false but at this moment the uh, text is zero is sitting on the left side but we want it to sit on the right side so to do this let's say h align to right as you can see it's on the right side but the size of this text is the 
it's taking entire of this width, right? We don't want this text input to take whole of our space, right? So let's just set a size. So to set size, we have to say size hint and it will take a tuple. And now here you have to pass the value. So let's say one and 0 0.19. So what is this 0 0.19 is? This one is basically saying that take entire of the width means 100% of, of, of width and 19% of height. But at this moment you won't see any changes is because we don't have any other elements, okay? We don't have all those buttons, so that's why you won't see any changes. So once we add those buttons, you will see that it will take 19% from the height. So now to create those buttons, we have to create a grid layout. So there's a grid layout. And inside of this grid layout, you have to put two parameters. First one is columns and second is row. That how many columns you want and how many rows you want. So in our example, uh, we need four columns and we need five rows. So let's just define it. So there's a calls four and rows, let's say five. Now we have to uh, create our buttons. So to create button, let's say button. Remember, we are uh, working now on grid layout. So make sure the indentation is correct. We are inside the inside of this grid layout. So there's a button, and inside of this button, let's say text. Initially, the, the text is gonna be let's say percentage. We're gonna change it later. And let's say font size is 32. And okay, now let's run it. Our text input is taking 19% uh, of height, and rest of the space is taken by this button. Don't worry if we add more buttons, it will adjust accordingly. So don't worry about it. So let's just add a comment here. So let's say row one. And inside of this row one, we need four buttons. So let's just create four buttons click quickly. So let's say text is percentage and font size is 32. Great, and similarly, second, third one, sorry, third one, sorry, I did a mistake, and I guess this is it, one, two, three, no, another one. Great. Now let's run it. Okay, we got an error. Oh, this will be font size. Yeah, it's working perfectly fine. Now let's create our row two. This was our row one. Now let's just copy it, simply let's say copy, sorry, copy and let's come to bottom of this and let's say row 2. Well, indentation is not okay, let me just fix it. Okay, so indentation is correct. Now let's run it. Yeah, it's working. Get and again similarly, let's say row row three. I'll just fast forward this process that you you guys don't get bored.
Okay, so this is our row three. And let's create row four. And again, and our last row, row five. Okay, so our five row is created and in each row we have four buttons means four columns. So let's just run it and yeah, it's looking good. But the color is not looking okay. So to fix the color, so what you can do, you can set the color for each of this button by saying that background background color and you can pass the value the RGB value but the problem is uh, you have to set this for each button but we don't want to do this so what instead of this what we are going to do let's just copy this button ctrl c and this come at the top and again this less than and greater than sign and button inside of that less than get at in sign and here you have to say background color now the problem is the way kiwi handles color uh, it's kind of weird so basically rgb color goes from 0 to 255 but in kiwi the color goes from 0 to 1 so 0 means black 1 means white so you have to put numbers between them but this is kind of tricky what if you want some other color like as you can see in this in this example you can see those colors what if you want this kind of color you you can't measure that that color code between 0 to 1 so to measure that there is a simple way is just pick a color so let's go to browser and let's say color picker and I have I did choose a color that color code is 2 10 and maybe this was 24 yeah so this was the color which I was taken so what if you want this color you can you don't know that value of this color from 0 to 1 right you know the RGB value so what you have to do is let's just come to our QE file and let's say the first value is what is 2 10 and 20 for red is 2 green is 10 and blue is 20 so in QB file what we have to do is so this is 2 and just simply divide this 2 by 255 so it will get the value of like from 0 to 1 it will get that value automatically so similarly from z for z value it was 10 divided by 255 or you can say 24 divided by 255 so this will uh, get you the exact color what you see uh, which one you see in here so just take the rgb value and divide each RGB value by 255 if you are using color in Kiwi. So now let's just run it. And as you can see, this color is being taken. Okay. So now this is obviously looking weird because of this percentage. But if you notice, this color is kind of black, right? It's more black. It's not this is we are not getting that blue, bluish tint right it's, it's black if you compare this have a look this is black completely black why is that this is because kiwi always take the darker color you have given so to uh, remove this so let's say background normal and then an empty string and now if we run it 
you will notice this this bluish tint is back so let's just uh, with this let's set a size as well so this is size hint for our button so let's say 0 0.2 2 percent for each button so simply uh, this size hint will help us to maintain the button size ratio okay so there you go now this is looking good now we have to change the color of this text input so let's come into this text input and let's say at the bottom background color similarly the background color is gonna be let's say for radius 20 divided by 255 similarly as we taken for the button divided by 255 and we want uh, a blue stain so let's say blue is gonna be 30 and 255 divided by and the alpha another thing uh, another parameter you can pass is the alpha alpha is basically the opacity of that color so let's say it's one that's mean we want completely we want the complete color so as well as set this two in here as well it's a one and now if i run it yeah it's the color is have taken but the text is black and the color is also dark so it's not looking good so let's just change the text color so to change the text color of uh, text input you have to change you have to say foreground color foreground color and let's just say one 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 and one so this is the one 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 means white means you can consider it as 255 255 and 255 this is the same thing and th this one is the alpha value so we, we want no transfer transparency now if i run it this is the white color you can see so this color is white as you can see okay now it's raining heavy in here i hope you are not getting that sound now let's change the text of our button so if i run it now we can see every one of our button is just percentage sign but we don't want that percentage percentage signs in every button right we have to change it so for the first button the percentage is okay for the second button let's say it's gonna be c and for the next button so in here we have to uh, set a code for our if you notice that this double sign this sign to get this sign we have to set a code we need a code so that code is simple this is some simply let's say you and a backslash sorry not enter backslash and let's say you double zero double zero a b so it will get you that so it will get you that sign as we can see and for the next button let's say a slash icon and for row 2 let's say 7 sorry 7 8 9 and cross chino or x and for the row 3 let's say 4 5 6 and minus for row 4 let's say 1 2 3 and and this is going to be plus and for row 5 so this is going to be plus minus this is going to be 0 and this is going to be dot and this is going to be an equal sign okay now it should look okay yeah it's looking perfectly fine so now we have to set the color for our last column so this line right if you see the finished one this line you have to set this in here as well so let's just close it let's say uh, background color 
and it's going to take a tuple similarly and the color code for this is 14 73 and 176 but it's not gonna work as you know so we have to divide this by 255 let's just divide by 255 and let's give it alpha value 1 and now copy it copy and now let's just paste in every column or at the last element of every row okay there you go now let's run it again and there it is our design is complete it's looking exactly the finished one and now what is left is the functionality so now we have to add all those functionality here and now we're gonna add all our functionality inside on this calculator widget class for now let's just say let's just remove this pass and let's say create a method called clear and this clear method is gonna be for our this C button if as you can see if I play type something and if I hit C it will clear the screen so we have to create this well in order to create this functionality we have to grab the text input right we have to grab the text input because we want to clear this text input so we have to know that where our text input is and to know this we have to set an ID to our text input so let's get back to our uh, kiwi file and inside of this text input let's say ID and let's just call it input box and copy this input box ID and inside of this method we have to say self dot ID sorry IDs dot input box dot text text equal let's say zero okay so now what we have to do we have to uh, let's get back to our kiwi file and let's come to this C button where we have the C button and inside of the C button we have to say on press so whenever the C button is pressed what you want to do we want to fire up this clear method and so to do this so let's say root dot clear so this root is referring to our python file and inside of this python file we are, we are calling this clear method okay so now let's run it and inside of this text input if i hit if i say anything and hit c as you can see it's clearing the screen it's clearing the screen okay so our clear method is completely working so okay guys we are done with our clear method and now let's get the button values so by getting button values i mean uh, if you notice the original one if i click on a number it it appears at the screen right so that's what we're going to do and to do so i'm going to create a method and now let's call it button value and this button value will uh, gonna take an argument so this is gonna be number and now we have to know that as we are gonna put all those number inside of the text input so we have to know what the text input is or is there any number already existing or not so to do this let's say prev number prev number and we are gonna get the existing number which is already exist in in the text input right so to get this let's say self self dot ids dot input box dot text okay so in this way we are gonna get that so now what we have to do we have to check if previous number is equal to zero so that's mean is zero is already there then what we need to do we have to first clear the screen so we don't want anything so let's say self dot ids dot input box dot text equal to 
an empty string so it will clear the screen first of all and secondly right after that what we're gonna do we're gonna input that number that particular number which the user have given so what is that number that number is this argument right that's what we're gonna pass here and now just copy this name let's come to our kiwi file now we have to bind this method with our kiwi file without this this not gonna work okay so to do this let's come to these numbers make sure you're on those numbers so to add those on number just come down and let's say on press and then root sorry root dot the method name is button value and if you remember in this button value we passed a number parameter so we have to pass an argument here the argument is gonna be seven because the text number is seven so if someone press on text seven I want to appear seven up there so that's why I'm passing this seven okay similarly on press root dot button value and the number is gonna be similarly eight now just simply copy it and paste everywhere you see the number and then change the number according to that particular number okay great now let's try to run it let's run it yeah number is appearing have a look every number is appearing correctly oh maybe i did one mistake i didn't add to the zero uh, let's add it as well on zero uh, yeah there it is and zero okay now have a look now the problem is we can't add multiple numbers if you have a look we, we just can add one number at a time we can add multiple numbers now we have to solve this issue so let's just come to this method this button value and now let's just add a else statement else else what i'm gonna do i'm gonna self dot ids dot input box dot text so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna take the previous number and after the previous number i'm gonna add the number which user is added so in this way it will just work perfectly fine and you will be able to add multiple numbers have a look you can add multiple numbers now so now uh, let's create another function another method whatever you want to call and this method will get the signs the plus minus or percentage all those steps so let's say signs and this signs as well take will take an argument and parameter called sign and then similarly i have to get the previous number dot ideas dot into box the text okay and now all we have to do we have to add the signs after that previous number so self dot ideas dot input box dot text equal to i'm gonna add the previous number and after that previous number i'm gonna add the sign okay so now if i run I won't be able to add signs because I did a mistake sorry I have to add this sign function to the kiwi file let's come at top at the row one and here you have to add this function on press root dot signs and you have to pass the parameter that what sign will appear if you click on this button I want to appear per sentence as this is a per sentence button okay now just copy this line and uh, just paste everywhere 
not every or actually paste on those signs slash okay and now give this and here you have to change it don't put a x here so in here we need asterisk sign instead of cross sign is because when we are going to calculate these things uh, this cross sign will create some error so to avoid those error we are going to use asterisk sign and in here as well just change it to minus and here it is it's going to be plus sorry, plus okay now let's run it ah, I got an error ah, sorry guys I did a mistake text input only takes a string so we have to pass a strings here just convert it to a string just add some double quotes or single quotes okay now let's run it yeah it's working good every sign we're getting so now let's move on to our next functionality which is to remove the last character i have to remove the last character when i press this button okay so let's do that as well come down and let's create a and let's create a method called remove last and this is not gonna take any parameter and then similarly I have to know the previous number so just check for previous number and text okay to do this let's say previous number I'm gonna update this previous number like previous number minus one clone minus one now what is it doing it's simply string slicing and it's simply removing the last character of this previous number and updating this previous number variable and now we have to put we have to show the updated previous number onto the text input so to do this self dot ideas dot input box dot text equal previous number so first of all we are getting that previous number which was already in the text input and then we are removing one character from the text input and then we are updating that previous number again and then we are showing that updating previous number onto the text input okay so now let's run it oh again again man I did the same mistake I don't know why I'm making the same mistake oh man they just come on top and I just woke up guys so please bear with me oh man I'm making so much mistake so on press root dot width oh uh, the what was the name remove last character yeah control C and control V there it is okay run it type something and press yeah 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 it's working fine great so now we can remove the last last character great okay so as we're done with this functionality now let's create the main functionality of a calculator which is to calculate things so there's a df results and now what you have to do similarly you have to get the previous number which was already in the text input so to get this self dot ideas dot input box dot text and we are, going to, we are going to store it into previous number variable and it is pretty simple trust me guys this to get the result is really really simple you just have to do is let's create a variable called result result and now we have to say eval previous number and this is gonna do everything for us this eval function is gonna do everything for us we don't have to worry about anything just simply let's say we have to show the result okay so 
we get the result already now we just have to show this result to our text input so to show this let's just say dot ideas dot input box dot text we're gonna show the result result okay okay so now let's add these results to our equal to sign in here okay on press on press root dot results now let's run it and now if i hit any equation and if i hit equal it's gonna give us an error so it's gonna give us an error is because input box only can take a string and this is a maybe it's an integer so we have to convert this into a string so to convert this let's say a string this function will simply convert our results to a string now if i run it again now it's gonna work perfectly fine 9 plus 6 15 9 minus 3 6 okay 6 into 9 okay so it's working fine but if i divide something by 0 it's gonna again give you an error because you can't divide anything by 0 so we have to uh, to avoid this error and to avoid this crash we have to catch this error to catch this let's say try let's say try this and except except this what i'm gonna do uh, i'm gonna let's say show something on the screen ideas dot input box dot text i'm gonna show a text that wrong equation in this text on this text input so if someone try to divide by zero it's gonna simply say wrong equation so it's not gonna break the application instead of this it's gonna say wrong equation if i now if i type something let's solve this if i type something this wrong equation should get rid of okay so to get rid of this function let's come on top and inside of this button value let's say in here let's check another thing if wrong equation sorry wrong equation in previous number then simply i'm gonna clear the previous number and then we're gonna check everything as it is so now let's run it again and if we divide something by zero and if i hit any number that's the wrong equation should get it should get rid of now let's convert our number to negative and to positive uh, whenever we press this negative and positive button as we can see this original one so we have to add this functionality to add this let's create a function or method we call let's call it positive negative it's not going to take any arguments and we have to get the previous number self.ideas.inputbox.text and now if minus is already there in previous number so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna convert this to a positive number so i'm gonna let's say self.ideas.inputbox.text equal I'm gonna convert this previous number so I'm gonna replace this dot replace so I'm gonna replace the minus I'm gonna replace the minus with nothing so that means it's gonna be a positive number but if it's already a positive number so we have to convert it to negative number so ideas dot input box dot text equal we have to add a minus and then previous number so there you go so this is a num minus if you can see it this is a minus before this curly braces so you, you have to add this minus okay you have to add this minus before this 
previous number okay so now let's take this and add this to our kiwi file on press root root dot that function and now if i run it now it's a positive number if i press it it will be a negative number and if i again press it it's gonna be positive number okay great okay so now we are done with the positive negative now let's work on the dot okay so now we have to create a functionality for dot so let's say df dot and now let's say we have to get the previous number similarly previous number equal self dot ids dot input box dot text and now i have to check that if that dot already in or not so if dot in previous number then just simply pass I'm gonna do nothing else if there have no dot so we have to add a dot so so let's say previous number and after the previous number let's add a dot okay and now we have to show this previous number in the text input so input box dot text equal previous number and now let's take this dot and add this to button on press root dot dot okay now let's run it and now if i hit dot you can add dot as well and the problem is you just can add only one dot means one decimal number you can add multiple decimal number so that if I hit now you can see I can't add decimal number okay now we have to fix this so how we can fix this let's say num list equal previous number dot split so I'm gonna split this by plus so if if plus in a plus in previous number and and dot not in not in num list minus one so if dot is not available in the last character of this string then what we need to do similarly we have to simply just copy it copy and paste this here we have to do the same thing so now let's run it and it should work 56.3 plus 50 63 65 dot something okay it's working but the problem with this is if i say let's say 89.65 minus 65 if i add minus or any signs instead of plus it's not gonna add point so this is a really really big problem and we have to uh, split this string by multiple signs but the way we're approaching this problem this split method only can split by one only can split by one thing so this is a problem so to solve this problem we have to import a package called re i don't know what is it import re Already, I don't know what is it, but we have to import it. So just simply import it, and then let's come to this dot function. And instead of this, what we have to do, just simply close it and simply say re dot split. And this takes two argument that by which character you want to split and which one you want to split. So by which I want to split is I want to split so I want to split it by plus or I want to split it by asterisk or I want to split it by minus or I want to split it by divide or I want to split it by percentage. So this horizontal row this horizontal lines is defining or okay this is defining or but the problem with this is 
there are this asterisk sign and this plus sign is some kind of special characters so those are special symbols so you can't divide you can't split like this from a special character they have some different operations right so to split from them you have to simply add a backslash before them and now what we want to split we want to split the previous number so simply previous number so now we are able to split a string by multiple characters or by multiple signs so now what we have to do we have to write a really really big condition and when i say big condition i mean it is really really big condition so let's just remove it and let's say if plus in previous number or minus in previous number or slash in previous number or asterisk in previous number or uh, or percentage in previous number uh, yes this is it so this is a quite long condition i know i will i'll give the link of this code in the description you just can simply copy paste it if you can see it properly let me just make it small that you can see see the full condition or uh, still you can see it whatever <laughs> let's just keep it big i'll give the code link you just simply copy paste it from there and now let's change it to elif that's it and now let's run it so let's say one point 1.2 we can add multiple number plus 2.2 minus 3.3 yes trick 6.6 .6. so everything is working fine now so now let's simply create an equation let's do it 2.5 plus 6.3 is equal to 8.8 .8. you get 8.9 minus 6.3 sorry okay there you go our equation is completely fine into 56.3 yeah so everything is working perfectly fine 15 divided 15 modulus of 3 it should remain 0 yeah 0 good so there you go guys our calculator app is completely working and is fully complete. So thank you so much guys. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you like this video. If you have any question or any doubts, please comment down below. I would love to answer them. So thanks again. Thanks for watching. Take care. Bye bye. Tata. -ta.